All right, hello everyone, Mr. Barden here. Uh, this video that we're gonna be you know, going through right now is going to be uh, looking at the P5 Play library, uh, getting that into your P5 sketches, and then we're going to uh, spawn a sprite into our sketch and display just the default sprite on the canvas. Uh, later on in some future videos, we will get into more advanced things, being able to adjust the properties and the methods and the like with our sprites, being able to start using them to develop games and things like that. Uh, so again, before we start jumping into that, you know, if you uh, you know, enjoy the video as you go along, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. It does really help out. As we're going along, if you have any questions, you know, things don't quite make sense or you're just unsure about something, feel free to put that in the comments. I love seeing comments, uh, being able to respond and help people out with that. Uh, but let's just jump right in and get to it. So, uh, like I mentioned, we're going to be starting with the P5 Play library. Uh, what this library is, uh, is essentially just some external code that's been written that we can add into P5. That's essentially what a library is. P5 is itself a library, uh, but we can add this in and we can use it in order to control our sprites. A sprite is essentially just an object with several parameters to it and we can interact with it and control it. And you know they're used a lot in games, particularly 2D games. Uh, but our sprites are going, we're gonna be able to eventually control them, make them be able to interact with the user and other sprites on the screen, give them unique appearances and behaviors. And you can really do a lot with this library. But today we're just gonna start real simple. So the first thing we have to do is install the library to our sketch. So to do that, I've got a link in the description below to this page right here. If you're unfamiliar, this is the, um, I should say the, the textbook essentially for this class. Uh, I've gone through and actually I'm the, the guy who's uh, most recently gone through and revised most of this stuff. Um, so you can check it all out. A lot of what I'll be doing is here actually on this page, uh, but you can check it all out on your own if you want or go along with the video. It's a great resource to explore, especially if you're just getting used to doing some JavaScript coding, or maybe you're a little unsure about some aspects of game design, you can check this out as a good resource to find. But what I want to point out specifically on this page is this HTML code. So I mentioned that the library is just some pre-written JavaScript code that we can look at and add to the brain that is the, the computer trying to execute what we type. Um, and in order to tell it where to look, is this line right here. So if we copy it, um, I'm not going to go through and detail you know, everything. I have other videos about that, but we can copy this line, go into our index.html file, uh, and add it in here. So what I'd like to do is go down to the end of line five and just uh, you know, add a space and paste this uh, new script there before we have the links and everything, uh, and just add that right in. Now you won't really be able to tell a difference, but now when we run the code, the P5 play library will be included in the uh, in the sketch. So uh, we'll be able to do that. Uh, if you don't do this step, nothing we do from here on will work. You'll get errors that you know a lot of things are not defined. That can be very problematic. So you want to make sure that you have this library installed. Unfortunately, because we can't uh, you know, tell P5 to automatically install this every time, uh, you have to do it on an individual sketch-by-sketch -ske -sketch basis. Um, I find that a little annoying, uh, but I didn't write the program. So uh, anyways, what we can do is go in and essentially save our sketch, uh, and it can serve as a starting template. So if you want to go ahead and save your sketch now and then duplicate it, uh, you can have that uh, previous version as a starting template that's always going to have the P5 Play library loaded, and you can just duplicate it whenever you need to do something new with that library already there. It's a little, I don't want to say a cheat, but it, it's nice and easy and you know, makes your life, you know, you can have bigger things to worry about. All right, so again, this is just the default sketch, nothing out of out of you know the normal there you'll probably notice that now we get these two um, messages in the console a lot of times 
that's totally fine. Um, that's not going to cause any problems. Um, or in most cases, it won't. Um, but just I'm leaving it on the screen. You can check that out if you need. But it, we really, I've never run into a, an issue in the several years I've been teaching this course using this library. So just know that those will pop up, but don't freak out. All right. So in order to make a sprite, it's pretty straightforward. If you've worked with objects and classes of objects before, well, these sprites are objects, so a lot of the syntax is going to be the same. If you haven't, uh, check out some of the playlists. I'll try sticking those at the end screen here uh, at the end of the video, uh, just about working in objects and classes. Uh, it's some useful information to know. You don't strictly have to know it, in order to work with this, but I think it'll make your life a little bit easier if you just know some of the background structure for how things are built. It'll save you some, some time and headaches later on. So let's start. I'm just going to call uh, our sprite here my sprite. This is going to be our sprite that we put on the screen. Um, we have to have a container for the sprite, so it's just going to start its life just as an empty variable. What we have to do next is tell our code to turn our variable into a sprite. So we can say my sprite going to be assigned the result of the function create sprite. But we need a few arguments there. I mean, it, it will work as is, but we can set some uh, specific parameters. This will look fairly similar, but we need the X position, the Y position, the width and the height. Those are the four things we can decide right now, just like working with a rectangle in normal P5. You'll see why in just a second. So I'm going to say width, whoop, width divided by two, height divided by two, and I'm going to make this uh, 50 by 50. All right. So we have that right there. You would think this would be all you would need to see your sprite. But it's not. If you recall from, again, working with objects, you can make the object, but you actually have to tell said object to appear on the canvas. This um, is no different right here. So there's a few, there's actually two different ways we can make sprites appear on the canvas. The first one, I don't really like using, to be completely honest, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, and that's with this function that we've added with our library called draw sprite. And what you do is just tell it to which sprite you want to draw. My sprite. And now when we rerun this code, we should see it on the screen. Boom, there it is. A sprite is just by default um, is just a, a rectangle, a square on the screen. Um, so later on, we'll be adding, you know, stuff to it, making it actually look like, you know, what you would expect a sprite in a video game to look like. But this is just the default placeholder appearance. Um, this is fine and all. Um, however, we're going to run into a problem. So I'm going to say my sprite here. I'm going to name this other one Sally. Why not? Um, you should also notice that every time the code refreshes, uh, the sprites just get given a random color. So by default, the sprites will change color. Um, when I make my video on just properties and methods of sprites, uh, there's a very concrete way to make a sprite always be the same color. Uh, that may be something useful for you, especially if you have a lot of sprites but haven't put images on them yet or animations. You can make them all you know, specific colors depending on what they do. But for now, I'm just going to leave this as the random um colors so i'm basically just gonna copy that and instead of my sprite we're gonna say make that sally and i'm just gonna put the put sally at 100 100 how do we see you oh yes of course i'm an idiot that was the whole point i was trying to make um we don't see Sally, the second sprite, even though the second sprite should be right about here. We don't see it because we haven't told it to be drawn. Draw sprite only works for a single sprite. 
that's totally fine if you only have one sprite or maybe two or three, not a lot to work with. You can just specify this. But, I mean, I guess there's reasons for this could exist. I find that instead of saying this, saying draw sprites with an S is much more useful and can be a lot less code, especially if you have a lot of sprites on the canvas at once. So instead of saying draw one specific sprite, we're just telling P5 to draw all of the sprites. Um, so we have that right there. So now you can see here's Sally, this sprite, and my sprite down here. Um, and we can set that up so you can tell it where to put the sprite to start and how big. Maybe if, instead of that, I'm going to make it 150 by 50. And now um, Sally's very wide. Um, but that's okay. It's still a wonderful sprite, and we love Sally. Um, but anyways, that is essentially that. This is a, a relatively short video just to kind of go through the process again. You first have to include the sprite, um, you know, the, the library here. You then have to uh, have a container and a name for your sprite. And you have to assign it the result of the create sprite function, which is something from the P5 Play library. Um, you have to give it the arguments of the X and Y location, as well as the width and height of the sprite. Mm -hmm. You can and more than likely will be changing these as your code runs, but you need, you need to give it a default starting spot. The last thing is if you ever want to see your sprites, you have to tell the code to actually draw the sprites. And I prefer using draw sprites instead of, if I could type, uh, I cannot type at all. Um, I'm just going to comment that out. Um, I prefer the second one rather than the first. Um, you may notice one thing that these are different than rectangles, um, and that is that these sprites get drawn from the center of the sprite. A normal rect function gets drawn from that top left corner. Um, but again, you'll notice that I put for my sprite, the width and height divided by two. So that's the very middle of the canvas. And the middle of the sprite is very clearly in the middle of the canvas. So that, that can be useful, just making sure your sprites are lined up properly. Uh, but just be aware, that's kind of a, a minor thing, but I have had students run into issues where they can't seem to get it lined up just because they forgot that, oh yeah, sprites aren't rectangles, it just looks like one. Um, so again, they get drawn from the center of the sprite. The last thing I said, I know I already said the last thing, but I think I'm going to add one more just because it's a pretty short video. Uh, and there's one more kind of important thing we can get with um, on this page in the textbook. Again, I'm kind of, you know, already going through a fair bit of this, uh, but we can uh, put our sprites into a group. Um, so here um, I've got this uh, little section right here. And in fact, if you were to just pause the video and look at this you've got everything you need to know this is a very simple thing to do but can be very useful um so let's say we wanted to put both of our sprites into a group uh we can make a group to control our sprites so i'll say sprite group no space sprite group uh so i'm going to make a group here so uh sprite group it's going to be a new group, just like that. And then once you've made the group, we then have to make the sprites. So I have to do this after we have the create sprite. So I'll then say my, um, let's say sprite group dot add my sprite. Um, and then down here, sprite group dot add Sally. All right. So again, this group, the reason we want to use this, uh, your, you would want to when you have multiple sprites, is now you can talk to all of the sprites in that group at once. Maybe you have a, a, um, a game and you, uh, I don't know, you, you need to 
talk to all of the enemies at once and you know, make all these characters you know move to the left and walk off screen i don't know it, it can vary but you can use the group to talk to everything in the group at once or set a bunch of properties or methods all at once i'm going to kind of open up with this when we start talking with the sprites and methods video um just partly as a refresher but also so we can set all of the properties for several sprites at one just with one line of code it's very very useful um, as the last thing um of this video i know this is now the third time i've said the last thing um i realize i don't have a link on this page to what i want to go to actually um well anyways in the um i thought that would be uh annoying uh well anyways in the description of this video i'll add this in when i'm done recording the video um there's a reference page just for p5 play if i were to you know open up a new tab go to google uh and then just search p5 play um it'll be the first thing to pop up so we have right here the p5 play reference pages uh, or really just the general web page for p5 definitely definitely bookmark this if you're going to be working in p5 play um, there's a few useful things you can download the code or you can use that link i think the link is a little bit easier to work with there uh, are some examples which are very useful so you can see several different examples of different things you can do with the library so maybe you want to you know animate a sprite or you want to see some games, you know, stuff like that, that are made with the library. It's, it's pretty useful. I'm going to close that out and go back here, but what's going to be the most useful in my experience is the reference material. If you click on this, you can find everything you need to know about P5 play. That being, um, you know, here's the, uh, just the general P5 play. Here's all the, the methods. Uh, so here's create sprite right there um you know clicking on stuff uh, all sprites adjusting the cameras things like that um it can be very useful specifically for any sprite objects here's all the methods you can use and all the properties you can set for ed for any sprite uh, again very useful um if you go into group because i mentioned groups here's all the methods you can do with the groups so you can you know have them bounce and collide and you know do certain things um we just and talk to many sprites all at once it's pretty pretty useful in my opinion um, and then there's other stuff as well but we'll get into that uh, but again definitely have this page uh, in your mind because anything you might have a question for you may be used to just being in p5 and going to the p5 reference but p5 play is not made by the same people this is an external library uh, here uh, made by paolo Pedercini. I'm sure I butchered that name. I'm very sorry um, if Paolo ever sees that. But um, this is not the same person who made the normal P5. Um, but so in all of this stuff that you would normally be able to do is not, um, you know, not there. So anything that you need specifically with the sprites, you have to have the separate reference material. Anyways. That time I was right. That was the last thing I was going to mention. So that's it. That's how you can uh, spawn a sprite into your um, into your sketch. You know, including the library, displaying the sprites on the canvas, and even a bonus thing I didn't really intend to do when I started recording of putting those sprites into a group. Again, I hope you learned something. I hope it was a very useful uh, video for you. If you did learn something, definitely you know. Give us a like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, definitely uh, put that in the comments. As one final, final, final thing, um, I do want to say I also love seeing uh, things that uh, the community makes using these libraries and this information. So if you end up making something that you think is pretty interesting, put a link to it down in the comments. I love seeing and exploring those. So that's going to be all for me this 